This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Do you ever have those projects that should go fairly smoothly, but you seem to stumble through it? This mallet is one of those. This is a story about that. I had this odd shaped 16 quarter slab of quarter sawn walnut in my stack and I had been wanting to make an assembly mallet, something kind of heavy to knock joinery together with, but with a leather face so it didn't mar the workpiece. I grabbed my smaller chainsaw and realized I was long overdue for sharpening the chain. Hiccup number one. With my chunk of walnut cut, I laid out a square blank and headed over to the bandsaw. Now, walnut isn't notoriously dense, so it appeared as though my bandsaw blade was dull. An odd occurrence in the William Walker Company shop. Hiccup number two. While at the bandsaw, I cut a blank for the handle out of some eight quarter stock. On the exit of the cut, the tension and the wood pinched the blade. Hiccup number three. With a four inch by four inch blank cut, I squared off each end and laid out center marks in both ends as well as two faces. The two marks on the face were to drill a 1 and 3 8 inch hole in from both sides as my bit isn't long enough to go through the entire blank. Once I flipped the blank to come in from the other side, a V-belt in my drill press broke here. Are you beginning to see a theme? No matter though, I finished the cut with a cordless drill and inspected my round through mortise. Finally, I was ready to turn. I mounted the blank between centers and checked to make sure it was balanced. The nice thing about spindle turning as opposed to bowl turning is in general, if your blank is balanced, you can crank the speed up really fast. Some people like to cut the corners off the blank to make it more octagonal, but I don't find bringing the blank into round from square to be that time consuming with a sharp roughing gouge. Once my mallet head was mallet head shaped, I trued each end and sanded. Off the lathe, I was sure to misfocus and flatten the nubs at the 2x72 sander before mounting the blank for the handle between centers. Same as before, I cranked up the speed and got the blank into a cylinder with the roughing gouge. With a pair of calipers, I measured the mortise in the head and cut a tenon to match using the calipers to check frequently until they just slipped over the tenon. And while I use a square carbide to lengthen the tenon, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes, covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills, explore classes in everything from photography and creative writing to marketing, productivity, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes from experts working in their fields to help you gain new skills and live your best life. I have been trying to get better at graphic design to help my brand and have a more cohesive brand identity. I've been watching classes from George Bochua on using a grid system when designing logos and how to take a sketch to a finished logo in Illustrator. Look for an updated William Walker Company logo sometime in the near future. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable and an annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. Click the link in the description below to get a two month free trial of Skillshare Premium on me. With the head shaped, the mortise and tenons cut and fitted, the next step would be to finish shaping the handle. I used the roughing gouge to shape the part your hand goes around until it felt good in my hand. I've got large hands, so I made my handle with a little more girth. This is the part why making your own tools is so great. You can custom tailor the fit to what feels comfortable for you. I sanded the handle, then mounted the tenon in a four jaw chuck to cut the bottom off and finish with some Mahoney's walnut oil. 
Over at the bench, I used some Starbond Thick CA Glue, affiliate link in the description, to adhere some scrap leather to the face, then trim the leather with my shop-made marking knife. I cleaned up the leather a bit with my random orbital sander and finished the head with the same oil. At the bandsaw, I cut a kerf in the tenon, though I made a goof. My mind was thinking of metal-headed hammers and axes where the wedge is parallel to the flat sides. In this case, I should have been cutting perpendicular to the wood grain to avoid splitting the mallet head along the grain. Spoiler alert, the head didn't split, but it is something to take note of. I finished the cut with a pull saw to avoid nicking the shoulder of the tenon. I cut a wedge out of some scrap cherry and headed back to the bench. Honestly, the wedge should be enough to secure the mallet head, but I added glue to the tenon and installed the head and started pounding the wedge. I used my favorite drinking straw tip to remove the squeeze out and cut the wedge flush off camera. A little less out of focus, but still not nailing it, I matched the radius profile of the round head on the end of the tenon. Not crucial, but I think aesthetically it adds a nice element, and I spend a lot of time in my shop, and I like to enjoy the tools I use. Even though this build had its unexpected hurdles, I thought it would be good to share them in this video, that not every YouTube woodworker doesn't have those days, just like everyone else. I thought it was a good way to bring the viewer behind the curtain, and hopefully it makes me more relatable, or maybe it just makes me look like a dunce. Let me know in the comments. If you're not already subscribed, please consider it, and ring that bell to be notified of more content as I release it. Most importantly, though, thanks for watching.